So yesterday morning we woke up to three inches of snow in the middle of May and decided it was a perfect time to go pick up our septic tank. Now the state health inspector uh, determined that we needed a 1500 gallon septic tank to be sufficient for um, our needs up there. So I had two options. Option one is to get the traditional concrete septic tank or option two is the plastic tank. Now this tank was made by a company called Norwesco. Uh, and they happen to have a manufacturing facility not too horribly far away from here. Um, and the, they actually made the tank that we needed, this 1,500 gallon tank. Um, the benefits of the plastic tank versus the concrete tank are pretty simple. Um, probably the, the, the biggest issue is just the weight. A 1,500 gallon concrete uh, septic tank is going to weigh somewhere in the neighborhood of about 13,000 pounds. I would bet this tank weighs less than, than 450 pounds, maybe 500 pounds. So again, I was able to drive my truck and trailer down there yesterday with, with Reed, my four-year-old, and uh, get this truck on my trailer and haul it back up here. So I don't have the added expense of a crane uh, to set the tank. Um, there are some, some things you have to be aware of when using plastic tanks. For instance, uh, when, you, when you go to backfill a tank, it has to be full of water uh, so you don't collapse the tank, things like that. But if you can follow instructions in, in most states, the homeowner can actually install their own septic system unless it's called what's, what, what they uh, define as a complicated septic system. Now our, se our septic system is not a complicated system. On top of that, I'm a, I'm a, a plumber with over 15 years of experience, so I'm, I'm very familiar with, with septic systems. So we chose to go with the plastic tank. Uh, Cost-wise, concrete tanks to plastic tanks are often comparable until you factor in the crane service and the man hours that it's gonna take to put in a concrete tank versus a plastic tank. Um, the other issue that is oftentimes apparent with concrete tanks is they don't last a lifetime. I don't care what anybody says, um, they break down. Uh, the, the byproduct of a septic tank is what's called hydrogen sulfide gas. And, sept and concrete tanks are porous, and so they, they will absorb those gases and they break down. Um, if you happen to live in a high, um, a high moisture area where the water tables are, are high um, and you have to do what's called a mound system, it's even more, uh, <coughs> excuse me, even more prone to uh, early failure. And so, you know, I did my homework, I did my research, and I decided that the plastic tank uh, was the best way to go. I reached out to the company. Uh, talked with them, made sure it was right for uh, my area. This also has to be what's called a state approved tank. You can't just go get any old 1500 gallon tank. You have to make sure it's what's called, you know, state approved. I made sure that this was an Idaho accepted tank. Um, the next question that we have is, um, is, you know, will we do a traditional leach field? And more than likely we will. Uh, there's a new system called the infiltrator system which eliminates the need for rock in a septic um, in the septic leach fields but the, the the downside to that infiltrator system is it's just super expensive um, but the guys that are in the business love it because it goes down so fast so you can bid a job out use the in infiltrator turtles or whatever you want to call them and they can slap those things down in an afternoon and you know do an, an eight or ten thousand dollar septic system in less than an afternoon and have maybe three or four grand in hard ca hard costs. So if all goes well, I'll end up doing the um, the traditional uh, leach field using rock, using um, the perforated pipe. And I, again, I'll, I'll make sure all of this is approved by the, uh, the uh, health inspector. Um, and I technically do not have to have a, a licensed um, uh, contractor involved in the process, although I will. The one thing that I've done through this whole process is I've just talked directly to the uh, the health inspector to make sure there's no uh, no red flags, no issues. And, and what we will do as we install this is we'll do more detailed videos about setting the tank, and then we'll also do a more detailed video about uh, the leach field. You know, when this topic comes up of off-grid living and plumbing, the question always arises, can't I just use a composting toilet? We believe that with our five kids, we're not interested in, in, in the composting toilet. Um, you know, I spent 15 years in the plumbing industry and I know at least a half a dozen guys that ended up with, with hepatitis because of being exposed to it. And the idea that a composting toilet, toilet is as clean as a traditional toilet is just simply not true. I don't care how clean you are. I get it, people use them. 
I got nothing against them, but I'm not interested, especially with young kids. Uh, and so that's why we're, we're going to the lengths that we're going to, to put in a traditional septic system. It would be a lot easier just to put in one of these composting toilets. And frankly, it'd probably be cheaper. Uh, but but the, uh, the bottom line is if you look back in history, and you see when traditional plumbing was incorporated into some of these cities in England, you immediately see an increase in life. Um, you, you immediately see that, that, that things like uh, uh, hepatitis and, and, and all the bacteria and pathogens that sometimes come with uh, exposure to sewage, especially cross-contamination between, between sewage and wells, that stuff goes away. And, and so we feel this is a, an investment worth doing and therefore we're going to spend the money that it takes to put this, this uh, septic system in.